In this video, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I will be upgrading Windows 10 to 11 with a fully loaded drive and keeping the apps and files. I've never done this before because I always install Windows fresh. I back up my files and then I do a complete reformat. Everything is wiped and then I start over with a blank slate. But I'm curious for those who do choose to do the upgrade and run into the prompt that asks whether or not they wanna keep personal files and apps, what does that really mean? For all the programs, especially the non-Windows Store ones, do they carry over? And if so, what about the settings and presets? How seamless of a transition is it really? I have seen people online say that only the Microsoft apps are kept, and others say that all programs are kept. So which is it? I wanna find out in this video and show you all because I can't be the only one who's wondering this. So let's do just that, right after a quick word from this video sponsor. VIP SED key. Whether you're building a brand new PC or already have one that's running Windows unactivated, do you really wanna pay over $100 for Windows? That money could be better spent on hardware upgrades and peripherals. Grab a license from VIP SED key at a fraction of the retail price and use code NERD to save 25% off your purchase. This system is actually unactivated and I'll show you how easy it is to purchase a key and activate it later after we do the upgrade. So let's get back to it. First, we're gonna take a look at my existing Windows 10 install. This is a copy of my personal drive, so a very real world scenario. And I wanna highlight some things that I hope get carried over seamlessly when we upgrade to 11. One thing I use a lot is sticky notes. So I've made a list of all the different things that I could think of off the top of my head that I wanna check now and after. So sticky notes, uh, I have this list and some nice ASCII images here. So we'll see if that gets carried over. You can always back this up. You can find the root directory where this is all stored and back it up. But I'm just curious if this is gonna be kept. And then there's the wallpaper, which if it doesn't end up being kept, it's not the end of the world. You can always just find the picture again and set it. And then there's like browser. So if we open up Chrome, uh, is it gonna be already logged in to my Google account? And is it gonna have like all my bookmarks and stuff ready to go? Again, these are all things you could export and re-import and reset up. Not a big deal, but just for a seamless transition, it would be nice. Uh, and then there's RGB software. So I'm using Corsair IQ right now, as you can see behind me, here is the computer. And yeah, so this already has like a couple of profiles I have. Here's one to make the computer green and uh, one for the pastel rainbows. Uh, Adobe CC, so right now, I am logged into my Creative Cloud account and it has all my Adobe apps. And here I put recent files, all programs. And what I mean by that is for programs like Adobe Premiere Pro, the files that I've recently worked on so that I could have quick access to them without having you know go to open project and then going through all my directories and things like that. Is this gonna be saved and carried over uh, so that I could just quickly open up a previous uh, you know file that I was working on? Uh, same with Photoshop, like it has all the stuff that I've worked on recently. And here's TextPad, when I go to file, here's some recent files. So that's what I mean by the, the recent files. And then in Premiere Pro specifically, you know, I have my workspace. So if I go to my workspaces, there's the like, the default ones that Adobe has, but I've set my own workspace, Nobe workspace and it has the windows and stuff where I like it. So is that gonna be carried over? And over in Photoshop, you know, people have their settings and presets and they have their brushes and stuff. So is this gonna get carried over when we do the upgrade? As a content creator, I use OBS a lot, either to record or stream. So are my profiles and scenes gonna be kept? Here I have all my scenes and I have my sources and my profiles here. These are things that you can export so that you can re-import to a new install. But I'm just curious, are these things gonna be kept? Is the taskbar gonna be the same? Like I have all my pinned programs down here. File Explorer pins, that's a big one. So, you know, I have my quick access stuff here and various folders that I have for like my projects and things like that. Are all these pins gonna be kept in File Explorer? Is my NAS gonna be attached? So I do have my NAS mapped here. And again, not a big deal to re really have to map it, but if it comes over mapped, that would be pretty awesome. And then there's all the game launchers like Steam, Epic, Battle.net. So right now, if I just open them up, they should all be logged in. So yeah, my Steam is already logged into my account. And on Battle.net, I'm logged in. And on Epic, I'm logged in. 
So is that gonna just be seamless or do I have to, you know, log in, re-authenticate, all that stuff? Microsoft Power Toys mouse highlighter. So that's what I'm using right now on my mouse cursor to get it highlighted in green so that you guys can see it easier. VLC libraries or whatever other media player you guys use. So like, you know, I have my videos, my music and like pictures uh, are on here. Uh, is this all gonna be readily available so that I can just, you know, start listening to music or watching whatever? Or do I have to refavorite or map things? I put tree size on this list, but now I can't remember why. So I'm actually gonna delete tree size on there. Recycling bin. So, you know, we all delete files and folders and things like that. But sometimes we change our mind and we want to bring them back and we go to recycling bin and we can restore. I'm curious if once we upgrade to 11, if the recycling bin is still gonna retain all these things or not. So yeah, that's all the things that I could think of off the top of my head that I wanted to compare. You'll probably have other things that you're curious about too, but I think this is enough to give you a pretty good idea of what is gonna happen after the upgrade process. So let's go and do that right now. So to do that, go to the start menu down in the bottom left and just type in update, bring up the check for updates. Uh, this is where you'll do your Windows 10 updates. And if you're anything like me, you've probably been annoyed for the last how long that Windows has been shoving Windows 11 in your face. So we're actually going to finally go to download and install. So we'll click on that and you should definitely read the software license terms because everybody does accept an install. And then now it's gonna download. All right, so it's finishing with the download and then it goes straight into installing. And before I forget, you need to back up all your most important files that you cannot risk losing before doing this. I have heard from my own viewers that when they chose the option to keep all their files and programs, the upgrade got botched and they lost everything. In general, it's good practice to back up all your most important stuff all the time anyways, but especially when you're doing something like this that is literally altering your operating system and your storage drive, back up your stuff. If you ignore this advice, don't come running to me or the internet crying that you lost all your files if you didn't back up. All right, the restart is required. Let's restart. Yeah, so this definitely feels more like just like a typical Windows 10 update than it does like a full OS update because you know, they say Windows 11 is really Windows 10 under the hood and it's just like things are moved around and the UI is a bit different, but 10 and 11 are still very similar to each other. So uh, just looking at the way this is now, it actually just looks like a typical Windows 10 update that's being applied. All right, we've got the new Windows 11 loading wheel right there, doing more updates. Okay, I think we're, see if it still gets in with my same password. So we're in Windows 11 and right off the bat, I can see stuff has been kept. All right, so we're now gonna do a comparison between all the things I noted before and now. I see that BattleNet is logged out. I'll log into that later. Steam is doing some updates, so we'll check on that later. We'll start from the top. Hopefully stuff doesn't keep popping up on the window. Uh, sticky notes, they're all here. They got kept, sweet. So we're gonna just say this is good. All right, wallpaper is kept, so that's good. Let's go to the browsers with Google Chrome. Got all my bookmarks and things. I'm still logged into my Google account. So, okay, good RGB software. So we'll open up Corsair IQ real quick. And yep, I got my profiles and I can make it green. All right, this is looking to be seamless. All right, Adobe CC, are we still logged into there? And we are, I am logged into my account right here. Recent files, all right, we'll go to TextPad. If I go here, yep, we can go to both Premiere Pro and Photoshop. All my stuff is here. Let's go see if my cool brush is still there. And it is my brush still there. Premiere Pro with all my recent projects. I can open one up and all the files are still linked. None of that got messed up. So I will call those good. OBS, yep, everything is here. All my scenes, all my different profiles. 
Taskbar is good. The file explorer. So we go through here. Yep, all of my stuff is pinned, readily accessible. And my NAS is still attached. Interestingly, the name of it changed because I had a joke name earlier about like the biggest homework NAS ever or something like that. And uh, I'm gonna blur it out now because I don't want this information out there, but it is defaulted back to the name that my NAS is, not what I renamed it to, to, you know, keep that private from you guys. So for game launchers, let's take a look at that. Um, so Steam was logged in. It's still logged in. Epic Launcher, still logged in. Battle.net got logged out though. Uh, so I have to log back in here. But yeah, it logs right in. My highlighted mouse cursor is still here. I didn't have to re-enable it or do anything, so that's good. We'll check out VLC to see if all the libraries are still there. VLC crash. It instantly crash? No. Huh. Looks like VLC actually does not work. Yeah, uh, VLC player does not work. Interesting. And this might just be like, I got unlucky and it didn't work and it might work for other people, but let me see if I can find it. It's just not gonna work, huh? Okay, so VLC, not good. Um, and again, I don't know if this is unique to me or not, but uh, like for me, the most important stuff was OBS, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. So yeah, your mileage may vary. Just, just keep in mind, you know, uh, it might be like a 98% good upgrade, but there might be a few things that don't work. Uh, and then the recycling bin was the last one and it's all right here. I can restore them and everything. Yeah, so there you go. That answers the question. I'm not seeing the activate windows watermark. Is this all of a sudden activated now? That would be pretty strange, but okay. It is not active. The, the activation watermark actually comes and goes. I'm going to show you really quickly how to activate this. So the first thing you want to do is go down to the link in the description and choose the windows version that you have. So I'm on windows 11 pro because uh, I upgraded from windows 10 pro, uh, let's click buy it now. And then when you are in the order confirmation screen, type in code word nerd, apply that, and that should get you a 25% off discount right there. So the price is now just over $23. Then it's gonna let you do payment selection and I'm just gonna do PayPal because I do not have my credit card and security code, remember. All right, complete purchase. And there it is. The order has been created successfully. And here's the purchase. And it just go to view keys and codes. So this is the activation key right here. Go back to the Windows activation panel, change product key, paste that in there, hit next and activate. And there you go. Windows is activated and you are good to go. I am pleasantly surprised with how seamless that upgrade process was. I can basically use the computer without skipping a beat. It kept all my important programs, all my files. There wasn't any interruption with the exception of VLC player not working, but I'd say that was pretty minor given everything else that migrated over smoothly. Having said that though, I still plan to do my actual transition from Windows 10 to 11 with a complete reformat and wipe everything. After backing up of course, the drive that I showed in this example was a copy of my personal rig's main drive so that I could show you the difference, but I still prefer to have a fresh start and get rid of all that like underlying bloat, leftover files and dead folders that have built up over the years from like installing and uninstalling programs, as well as not have to worry about potentially carrying over any corrupted system files that either slow down or make the OS behave weird in the long run. There is nothing like the snappiness and speed of a fresh Windows install. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so yeah, everything I showed in this video doesn't even matter to me. I did this out of pure curiosity, not out of necessity. This is a pretty common question that people have out there and there's mixed information being given online. I was frustrated that I couldn't find a clean cut answer. So now I have it with video proof. 
But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hope this was helpful to some of you out there. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you someone who typically upgrades and keeps all the programs and files like what I just showed? Or do you like starting completely fresh with a brand new install? I'm curious to see what the split in the audience is. I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. Thanks VIP SED key for sponsoring this video. And even if you're not looking for a Windows key, they also sell games at a discount. So check those out as well. And of course, thank you to the channel members for their above and beyond support. Be safe out there and I'll see you all down in the comments as well as the next stream and or video. Bye.